uh, we will have the speech uh, about uh, how to report a bug and the management bug. And uh, uh, he's from Chris Republic. And uh, let's begin. Welcome. I think I'm going to sit down because it's easier with the phone, but I'm normally a person work, walking around. Um, yeah, um, welcome everybody, and thanks, thanks for your interest. It's cool to see quite some people here, like 15 or 20, so i um, very happy. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, so I, I want to talk about um, bug report management, um, which means that um, GNOME, as many other uh, free software projects, there is a public bug tracker where people like users or developers uh, report their software problems and then developers can take a look at the list and fix those they are interested in. And it's also pretty helpful um, for, for example, release management to see like uh, really important issues that should be fixed for the next major release and stuff like this. Um, yeah, why uh, do people do bug report management? because it's really managing the bug reports. I'm not a person fixing bug reports or writing code, because I think I'm not really a good developer when it comes to writing code, but I'm still interested in free software and open source, and this was kind of my spin uh, to contribute to free software uh, without writing code, because there's many ways to do this, and you also have documentation, translation, marketing, so. If you think you're not yet a great coder, or maybe you'll never will be like me, um, then this is a nice way to contribute. Sometimes I'm missing ego, yeah. <laughs> um, so, so why um, do people look at bug reports? Um, the main motivation is um, to help developers to spend their time really on developing and, and fixing bugs and writing code or new features. So uh, it can happen that bugs are reported that miss enough information to be really like, yeah, actionable or that the developer knows how to reproduce the problem and things like that. Um, so it's about helping to find important issues and making developers aware of them. And um, for that, GNOME has a bug tracking system. Um, which is located at bugzilla.gnome.org. How many people of you have seen the GNOME Bugzilla before? Can you put your hands up? That's like more than half. Great. So that means I might tell you boring things, but okay. No, but I'm, I'm happy uh, that, that you've seen this already. Okay. Um, Sorry? Uh, still interested in it. Still interested yeah. <laughs> So it wasn't that bad, I see. Yeah. Well, we can discuss this later. <laughs> Um, so what, what bug triage, this is quite often the term that, that people use. Um, triage means uh, sorting out the good and the bad ones when it comes to bug reports or other things. Um, when, you, when you triage bug reports, you normally take a look, does the report make sense? Um, is enough information provided? It can be really helpful to ask for the version because different uh, GNU Linux distributions might ship different versions and for example, Debian Stable has GNOME 3.4, I think, uh, and upstream developers in GNOME don't really care too much about what happened two years ago in the code base. So um, this is already helpful when you want to try to reproduce. Um, there's something called severity and priority, which often gets mixed up. I prefer to call them uh, urgency uh, when it comes to priority, because it's more like how quickly a ticket uh, should be handled, and if it's filed under the right product. I mean, um, you have, for example, GNOME Shell as the default interface in GNOME 3, but uh, in the background there's services running like GNOME Settings Daemon or so, or the GNOME Control Center, where the actual bug might lie. And, if, uh, and normal users pretty often don't really know which product to file it under to put it in the right basket so the developer of that product can see it. And um, there's the triage guide for it, which I probably should take a look at now. Um, this is the main resource um, which explains um, how to get started with bug triage. 
and um, this is also how I got started once upon a time uh, because I started with open source uh, by subscribing to users mailing list uh, of GNOME and I had my own questions and started to answer questions of other people at some point and at some point I realized oh there's something called a bug tracker so I might point to that bug tracker if there's an issue reported on the mailing list that's already in this bug tracker because that's the central point where developers uh, should take a look at to find what things go wrong. And um, so on this page you can see some basic information um, like what you should take care of, um, getting started, creating a Bugzilla account uh, when you want to comment in Bugzilla. Um, we have some stock responses and I'm going to show you later which saves you some time. Um, the steps of triaging, which is a bit lower. And uh, actually it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, so it doesn't make sense. Uh, you can check if, if the report is duplicate. Uh, you ask for the version. Um, you can clean up, for example, all the tickets, which is also something that's very helpful. So the list of issues for developers gets shorter if you help them cleaning up older tickets a bit, and for example, trying if, they, uh, if you can still reproduce them. Uh, yeah, is it the right place, the product, um, severity priority? There is different kind of issues. Um, and to get uh, notified of, of changes or of uh, follow-up comments, for example, if you have a question to the reporter, because the initial comment didn't have enough information, uh, you CC yourself normally. And, um, that's basically how things work. So I encourage you to read the triage guide uh, as a good introduction if you're interested in triaging. Um, there's, there's different types of reports. You can have a crasher, which normally means like the severity is set to critical because it crashes the application. Uh, a normal failure, for example, when a button doesn't work. Um, you might have a feature request like, hey, can you add this new functionality? That's when you normally set the severity field to enhancement because it's a request for, for enhancement. Uh, and sometimes you also have basically user support questions which shouldn't have become a bug report, but the user maybe didn't know where else to ask. So you normally say like, hey, thanks for filing this, but uh, this is probably not a bug, but more like a question how to change your settings so it works for you, and please ask on the mailing list. Um, how? So this is a bit like, there's also a GNOME code of conduct, um, but this is more or less, in a nutshell, uh, how I would describe it, sensible, um, patient, because uh, people might have a different uh, level of technological understanding, or whatever you want to call it. Um, friendly, because uh, a user probably spent her, his free spare time already providing this report to make your product better and uh, the user doesn't need to do that so it's, it's already really nice that it was reported and listening trying to understand uh, actually what for example the steps to reproduce are because um, sometimes users it's best if you have a structured list of steps that you can follow but, but if a user says like for example, filter my email, there's probably like two or three ways to do this, maybe via mouse or a shortcut or a menu item or a button. And if only one of them doesn't work, you really want to know like which exact way uh, the user took. Yes, we get lots of reports. <laughs> um, okay, this is now a block of numbers, which is probably confusing. But um, this is... Uh, I, I, I took this data three days ago from Gnome Baxilla, and these are the tickets reported in this year, since 1st of January. And you can see that until now, May 24th, or whatever today is, <laughs> um, we have nearly 10,000 reports, you can see in the, in the corner down there. Um, and 4,200 of those that were reported this year are still open, so it's less than half of it which actually is a good number. I, I was surprised when I uh, took a look at this data. But um, the rest, more like half of it, uh, got closed with a so-called resolution. And uh, you see that there's different resolutions that you can put on a bug report. Like fixed means that uh, 
the code change was committed into the code repository, which uh, fixes the problem. Uh, you have won't fix, which for example means like, I don't think this is a good idea, and I'm the maintainer of the software, and I don't think this is the way we want to go, so maybe it's a good idea for a different project, but uh, I don't want to work on this, and I don't want to accept the patch for it. Uh, we have duplicates, um, which simply happens because sometimes people search or already if uh, there is a ticket about their problem, but if you don't find the right search terms, um, I mean, you're unlucky. Plus, search takes time, and I already appreciate if people or when people uh, report issues and they don't need to spend even more time searching because this is the task of triages and a bit of developers. And um, there's, there's a few more resolutions. For example, incomplete is also interesting. Um, if we asked for more information to the reporter, but unfortunately the reporter didn't respond, or obsolete, what, what I uh, just said earlier, if it's reported about a very old GNOME version, then we normally just close it as obsolete and ask like, hey, um, can you please test this again with a newer version because developers don't work on that old version anymore. So we can't do anything. Question? Yeah. Do we have any kind of like, contract saying we are going to support X number of versions previous to the latest one or something like that? So the, the question is if, if we have any kind of like user contract, yeah, yeah, user contract is a good way. Um, kind kind of definition which uh, versions we support. Um, I don't think we have. Um, what what is my rule of thumb normally is uh, the latest two stable versions, um, which can be tough for some distributions, uh, which are releasing less often and more like. Uh, older, more stable versions, like for example Debian stable or enterprise editions. Um, but this is, if, if users uh, report problems of these older versions, we normally have a stock answer, I can show you later, which says uh, this version is too old for the GNOME developers in the GNOME Baxilla, um, but if your distribution still provides support for this old version, then please file a ticket uh, in the ticket tracker of your distribution, because that's the place where you should still get support for this older version. But now GNOME 3.12 is the stable version, and I would, for 3.10 and 3.12, definitely triage the bug reports, but 3.8 I would already say, like, mm, could you please try this with a recent version? So, <laughs> um, if you want to start triaging, um, create a Bexilla account, you enter your email address, you get a password, um, take a look at the triage guide, we already did this uh, quickly uh, earlier, and um, go on IRC um, to the uh, hash bugs channel. Be patient. I always have to say with IRC, be patient, because uh, there's maybe like 20 or 30 people in this uh, IRC channel, and people are in different time zones, or people might sleep, or not always take a look. But um, you normally need uh, permissions to really change the status of a bug report and so on. You don't get this automatically when you register an account, because, uh, for example, I mean, if a spammer registered and had all the rights immediately, um, that person could change a lot of things, which wouldn't be good. Um, so this is a little bit of a, a bottleneck sometimes, because you need permissions to really do your work. But if you want to get started, and if you're a new triager, um, you can always add a comment. And adding a comment to a report, for example, hey, I think this is a duplicate of number one, two, three, four. Uh, you don't need any additional permissions or so for adding a comment. And at some point, uh, you should definitely get these permissions to edit bugs, it's called. And then the, the classic problem in getting involved is a bit like, find your area to start with. Um, it, it's often a chicken and egg problem. I, I see, I see uh, new interested contributors, also for example, joining the GNOME Love IRC channel, uh, which is for new users. And uh, the question is, so tell me what I should work on. And in free software, it's really often that people tell you instead, like, well, it's about you finding your area of interest. Um, it, it's a classic problem. And, and I sometimes also wonder, like, where, where should I point people in the Bugzilla? Um, we have the uh, weekly summary page, 
which is one option. And uh, we have overview pages for products. For example, here is the link for uh, the GNOME Shell product. Uh, so I can uh, quickly show you. So this is the uh, front page of our Vaxilla. And I can go to reports. I'm logged in. And there should be yeah summary of bug activity for the last week. Um, so this is an overview page. This is the first link on my slide. And uh, you see the top 15 modules um, ordered by the number of the uh, open tickets. So you see like GNOME Shell is already on the second place. And I think GNOME Shell developers would really appreciate if somebody helped them uh, cleaning up and retesting some older reports. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, these statistics also show people, because uh, GNOME is made of people. So here you can see uh, the most active people closing tickets in the last week, and uh, also reporting and uh, patch contributing. And patch reviewing, true. Um, <laughs> and I'm nowhere there because I'm lazy. Um, and if you want to go to an overview page for product, let's, for example, take GNOME Shell, uh, you click and you end up uh, on a page where you have links to many, many things. So um, the total number of bug reports, here you would get a list of all these tickets. You can triage the new bugs of the last week. Um, priority, you can, you can help reviewing patches, for example. I mean, there's like 200 unreviewed patches, um, which doesn't necessarily mean that they're all unreviewed, but the status wasn't set to anything else. That's the initial status. Um, by severity, for example, critical normally means a crasher, or enhancement means a feature request. Um, and here you can triage by uh, versions. If the version field is set in a bug report, uh, you can, for example, go to 3.0, and you get 61 uh, open tickets that were filed, yeah, probably three, no, two, three years ago? Three years ago, because that was when the version came out. Or by components. And we also have a status uh, that we can set on, on tickets called need info, which means uh, the ticket needs more information from the reporter most of the time it is. Uh, so you can also go through these tickets and check, like, hey, has the reporter answered already? And should we reset the status from need info back to new, for example? Um, so this is the function of the Godzilla or someone by it? Um, this is a custom uh, extension in GNOME Vaxilla that you have this page as an overview for a product. This is not in standard Vaxilla software. Um, so, if I click now on the 61 tickets for GNOME Shell uh, 3.0, you get this list of tickets. Um, the columns you see might be different because you can uh, change which columns are displayed in Vaxilla for you. For example, I, I love to see also uh, the reporter and the assignee column, or when it was last changed is also interesting, because when I click here, it's ordered by the last change. So sometimes when I want to clean up older tickets, I start with the ones which haven't seen a change for a long, long time. Um, so I'll switch back, and then we're going to take a look at one bug report uh, soon. Yeah, fields and settings in the bug report. Okay, it's already now. <laughs> um, I shouldn't use these screenshots and probably just go to a real bug report, so I can also click fields. I'll take the first one, re-implement time zone display. That's actually a long one, as I see here already with the uh, slider on the side. Um, so you see the initial comment by the reporter, and uh, further comments you, you always see the uh, reporter, which is pretty helpful because you immediately know who you talk to. And developers are also marked as such. And uh, you, you see numerous comments here, for example, uh, a duplicate was merged into this ticket. Um, Alan links to the relevant design page here, so anybody who wants to work on this could take a look at the design. And uh, you, you see basically the discussion, um, people talking to each other like, like on a mailing list. Um, so I'm, I'm going to scroll down a bit now. I see there's mockups. I see there's code review, for example. Here there's patches, which, which got reviewed, because uh, we attach patches in Vexilla itself. Um, oh, the, the patches are committed, I can see here, because there are attachments uh, to the ticket. But uh, what I want to show you is um, 
Which that's an extension of mine. This confuses you probably. I should switch off my extensions. Um, this is th these are the standard stock answers you have uh, that you also see when you have an account uh, in Vexilla because this is on the server. Um, so, for example, if it's a crasher and uh, a crasher so should normally have a stack trace, so you can see which function was called from which function in which line, so a developer can take a look at that uh, line in the code source. You can click meet stack trace, and uh, you automatically here uh, get a thanks for taking the time to report this bug. Uh, please see this wiki page where we explain to you uh, how to provide a stack trace for this. And uh, you have way more uh, of these, like like bad description, for example. I should remove it. So bad description uh, links like, hey, uh, unfortunately, your initial comment, for example, cannot send email. Please help. Uh, that's nothing useful for developers. So uh, this links to a page explaining how to write a good bug report. And uh, you can see it also sets the status to need info, um, because that's actually what you're requesting. And uh, then you CC yourself on the ticket. I am already CC'd, I realize, I didn't know. Um, because then you can see if the reporter answers to your comment and your need info request. And uh, as I clicked, uh, I need a stack trace before, which implies this is a crasher, because only for crashes you need a stack trace. Uh, that stock answer also automatically set this to critical here, for example. So um, this is all stuff that's happening. Um, and yeah, you, you see lots of fields here. Normally this is at first really distracting and confusing. But I encourage you, ignore those fields that are confusing at first, or yeah, just, just don't care. I mean, what, what is interesting here, here's the product. It's in GNOME Shell. It's in the calendar part of GNOME Shell. You have the version field. So, um, if you, for example, uh, read triage a bug report by testing it against the current GNOME version, then you uh, and you can still reproduce the problem. You would add a comment. Um, I can still reproduce this issue what you reported in GNOME 3.12, and you would set the version field to 3.12. Um, this makes most sense if you're running the latest GNOME version. It's not too interesting if you can say like. This was this report was initially about 3.0, and I can refer this in 3.2. That doesn't help anybody if we're developing on 3.13 now. Um, and there's keywords. Um, keywords are kind of cross product. Um, so accessibility, for example, is it, accessibility is an issue in in all kind of uh, projects products. So it's a keyword because it's cross product. Anything where uh, there's support missing for, or for example, that you cannot use something with, with the keyboard, but only with the mouse, or um, the, the output um, of the screen reader doesn't work for uh, people who cannot see the content. And you have lots of keywords here. So um, not all of them are, are really important, but the ones I consider important is like GNOME Love. That's how we mark tickets that are good for first code contributors. So basically, triages help uh, those people that want to get started writing code in GNOME uh, to mark bug reports as easy for starters. Um, internationalization, if there's, for example, an issue with uh, right to left uh, rendering of text. Localization for the translations uh, themselves. Um, there's a few of the string changes. I think these are the most important ones. And uh, UI review is something uh, for the design team. So I can skip these <laughs> because I just explained them in reality and I had internet. It's, it's always the fallback if you don't have an internet connection to have this in the slides. Um, so you, you saw the status drop down, and uh, the most important ones are uh, unconfirmed new. We don't really differentiate. So um, unconfirmed also means new normally. Um, assigned if somebody works on it or plans to work on it, um, need info, and uh, resolved. I should probably quickly uh, show this uh, in this bug report without actually editing in the, in the end. But if, if I had committed a, a code change into the repository and it got merged, I would set it to resolve fixed. Or if I realize, okay, this is a duplicate of an already existing ticket, I would set resolve duplicate and then uh, enter the number here, and then click Commit to close it. That's basically all. 
Yeah, and then there's another link uh, explaining all these fields, but you can also just click in Baxilla when you don't know what is what. Here, these are links explaining what the fields mean. Don't get too confused. Ignore things. Um, triaging flowchart. I, I took this picture from the triage guide you already saw earlier. Um, and the SVG somehow didn't render well when it comes to some letters. But um, this, is, this is how things normally work. Um, it looks complicated, but I've seen projects that are more complicated. So basically, uh, you have this need info, and need info can happen all of the time when you need more information from the reporter. But normally, a bug comes from unconfirmed or new to assigned if uh, a developer says, I'm going to work on this, or if the developer is really fast, sometimes assigned is even skipped. And uh, quite often you end up, or normally you should end up with resolved at some point uh, with one of the resolutions I already explained earlier. And sometimes things get reopened, of course, if uh, the fix or whatever it was uh, didn't actually fix the issue, or if uh, it was marked as a duplicate, but it was not really a duplicate. So in that case, uh, you reopen things. I still have 10 minutes. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> um, quickly, good practices. Um, the triage guide, as I mentioned before. The stock answers that I clicked uh, below the comment field. Uh, sometimes they're also called canned responses, but they really help you saving some time for custom situations. And I, I like them a lot. Uh, yeah, the keywords I just showed you, which, for example, is helpful for the accessibility team, because that's the way uh, they actually find the problems to investigate across all of the different uh, project teams. And to, to summarize this in short, um, <laughs> use common sense. Well, I was told that uh, this can mean anything, uh, because common sense can be very individual, but try to behave rational. Uh, if, if you're unsure uh, what you should do, uh, you could ask first, like on the RSC chat that I mentioned, or the mailing list. Uh, the link is, I think, on the next page. Um, and, and one thing I added recently to the slide is uh, keep in mind that you help developers and users. Because I think in GNOME we didn't really have problems with triagers being too active or, or being too much after, I want to close a lot of tickets. Um, but of course, you can always end up like, hey, I, I want to close a lot of tickets, and it doesn't really matter if this helps the developers or the users. But in the end, bug triage means you support developers and users, and you should care about these people most. And Um, so these are the links. Uh, there's the mailing list. Um, it's a rather calm mailing list. So if you subscribe to it, it can happen that you don't see a posting for two months. Um, it's, it's only sometimes that things are discussed um, or that people ask for permissions or something. Um, I would really appreciate some more and new triagers or fresh blood. Because uh, recently it feels like there's a bit less of triaging and there's more of the developers taking this work. If I see the statistics, uh, the, the weekly summary page that I showed you earlier, I uh, nowadays see a lot of um, developers in that list and there were more triagers and non-developers a few years ago. And I think this helps developers because they save time and can do more development instead of looking at bucket points. And this is the central starting page on wiki.gnome.org slash uh, where you find a lot of information. Last slide but one. Um, this is also at the bottom of the triage guide, but, but I think it's, it's important. And uh, this is by Luis Villa, who I think was one of the first bug managers, bug masters, triagers ever, and also in GNOME around 2001, I guess. Um, Basically, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Uh, it happens to all of us. And when, when I started triaging, I also got corrected so many times by developers or by more experienced triagers, like, um, hey, you could have done this or that, or, well, whatever. But as long as you keep in mind being friendly and supportive, it's more like a help than a criticism. Please ask questions. Yeah, if not, I'm going to triage with you. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Uh, if um, 
one issue has not solved, and that issue doesn't work for me, should I reopen it or create a new one? Um, so, so the question is, um, if a ticket was marked as resolved fixed, I guess? Uh, fixed. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and it doesn't work for you, if you should reopen. Um, huh. <laughs> there's, there's no clear answer for this. So, um, when it comes to GNOME, GNOME is normally shipped by GNU Linux distributions. Uh -huh. And it's up to distributions when they uh, provide updated packages from upstream to you as a user, user via the distribution. So I would probably first check with your distribution if they really provided this update to you with this fix uh, that doesn't work for you. And um, if it doesn't work, I would either add a comment to the upstream web report if you've made sure that you're running that version, uh, or maybe reopen if you're really sure. But I, I, I would probably start adding a comment explaining which exact version you're running on which distribution. Um, yeah, that's how I would do it. If, if, if you're referring to a really old ticket, like you found something that was fixed five years ago or so, um, then I personally would open a, a new ticket because the code, change, uh, the code base has changed so much in the meantime that it's probably, technically speaking, an entirely different problem, while from the user point of view, what you're experiencing, it's the same. Yeah. So normally, people will report a bug um, against the upstream um, if, if people normally report to upstream or to the distribution, there's no clear concept of this either. Um, so how do this, you know it's upstream bug or distribution bug? It's, it's hard to tell if, if it's upstream or distribution if you don't really know the code. Uh, or if, you don't, if you're not aware how much your distribution changes, the, the packages of that distribution. So there's, there's distributions that are way more only taking the upstream uh, packages of software from GNOME and that don't change it. And there's distributions that change a lot. And for these distributions, I would rather prefer if things are filed in, in the distribution uh, ticket system first to, to make sure that this is really an upstream uh, issue. And, and normally you should get a comment to upstream the bug report at some point. Uh, um, it, it's hard to say, and this has sometimes also changed in the past. Um, Sometimes there's tools for automated reporting. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, desktops like uh, Ubuntu or Fedora, they nowadays have tools um, that report automatically crashes into a database for that distribution. Um, but yeah, th things have changed. For example, uh, I think uh, with, with Debian, for example, uh, I know that in GNOME we sometimes say, please file this into the Debian bug tracker, and that Debian people, at least some, sometimes say, we don't have the resources to handle this, please file it in the upstream bug tracker. And in upstream, we're then sometimes like, yeah, but if you're running Debian stable, this is 3.4, it's two years old, we don't care. So uh, you sometimes have conflicts out of this, but um, yeah, I, it really depends on the distribution you're using. Hard to generalize, sorry. <laughs> so in your slide, you mentioned that there, there are 400 tickets open each week, so uh, that means a lot. And um, so, so bug charging is not easy, right? So I'm wondering how people are qualified to be in a bug charging team or bug squid team. How, how do you, uh, how do you distinguish people who are qualified to be a bug charger to help us to triage bugs? So, is so there any standard to, to you know, to uh, make? to meet the requirements, so you can be a battery uh, If there's requirements or definitions how to be a, a bug triager, and especially the, the incoming number of tickets, uh, I think I'm uh, saying these questions again because we might be recording. <laughs> so it's also on, on the sound. Um, I don't think there's really requirements. I, I, I think any, I really think anybody can be a bug triager if you understand a little bit of English, if you uh, run the software that the bug reports are about, hopefully a recent version, so you can test a bit yourself or try to reproduce, and if you try to apply a little bit of common sense. Like, I mean, when you read bug reports and previous comments, for example, by developers, you already get an understanding which questions would be good to ask. I, I started uh, triaging the bug reports of the mail client in Chrome, and 
a common question, for example, when people have issues with mail, is normally like, do you use a POP or an IMAP uh, mail account? And here is the wiki page where it's explained how to get more debug output. Uh, can you please run this command and then uh, show it? It's, it's really a, a bit about learning, but, but I don't think there's real guides except for the triage guide, uh, which explains how things work. And when it comes to the 400 tickets per week, um, it, I, I'm not sure how many people there are, but really take a look at all of them. Well, not, not every each, not every in each one, but I mean like across the products. I, for a long time, I only took a look at the uh, uh, bug reports for, for the mail client. And at some point, I also took a, bug report, uh, a look at other bug reports of other products. So it, it's the same when, when you try to find the task for, first task for programming. You, you should probably, or you could probably start with uh, the project that you're most interested in and that you already know a bit and that you're using yourself. So you already know how things work and what are the ways to reproduce something. Other questions? I think I shouldn't triage now, and you've basically seen how it works. Yeah. So, because we're running out of time. But um, thanks a lot for your interest. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Andrew, to make a very nice presentation of report bug and management. Uh, as the QA software uh, engineer, I was cared about the fail or bug. But now I think this become more interest. Hey, thanks. <laughs> if people reply in a friendly way, you should not have fear. I really encourage you. As the last slide was like, you make mistakes, no, no matter in which position, as a reporter, as a creator, as a developer. But please do it. We're all friendly people, I hope. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, okay, the next uh, presentation will be uh, by Oliver. Oliver, great. Uh,